Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the upper extremity PNF patterns, also known as the diagonal patterns. And to do that, we're going to be looking at this diagram right here, filling in the pieces as we go. When you're first learning these PNF patterns, there's a couple different ways to think about them. One way is to look at them as the actual movement. So going from one position to the next and vice versa. Or you could look at them as individual positions, isolated snapshots in time. So here's one position and we're going to name it. Here's a second position and we're going to name it and so on and so forth. So we're going to do that here and I think that will make the movements much easier to grasp. First, in green here, we have positions of flexion. Why are these flexion? Because if we look at the shoulder joint, in other words, the proximal joint, it is flexed. Remember, when the shoulder is elevated, it is flexed. So these are the two flexed positions. When the arm comes down by the side, like you see here in the gold, the shoulder is now in a position of extension. So these two are my extended positions. Again, it doesn't really matter what the elbow's doing or what the wrist is doing, it's the shoulder. So arm is down by the side, so these are positions of extension. The D1 positions here in blue are similar to the positions for donning and doffing a seat belt on the driver's side. So the D and the D1 is for driver. Now, if you're in the United States or any other country where the driver's seat's on the left side, you are thinking about this with your right arm. If you're in any other country that has the driver's seat on the right side, you are thinking about this with your left arm. Hold that in mind, we'll come back to it in a few minutes. The D2 positions here in red are similar to the positions for drawing your sword and then putting your sword back in its sheath. Again, we'll come back to those in a few minutes. Now let's take all those pieces and put them together by looking at each position in its entirety. This first one on the top left is a position of D1 flexion. It's flexion because the shoulder's flexed, it's elevated. And the D1 refers to a position similar to putting on your seat belt or taking it off. In this position, he'd be in the driver's seat, at least in the United States, and reaching up with his right arm to grab the seat belt, kind of where it is, right by the window before you put it on. Okay, that's a position of D1 flexion. Now why is this one D1 extension? Because the shoulder is down. So this is a position of shoulder extension. And again, D1 refers to a position similar to putting on a seat belt. So this is where he'd be holding the seat belt and snapping it into place, into the clicker. If you're just doing this for active range of motion, you name this according to which position you're moving toward. So if you're moving from a D1 extended position right here to a D1 flexed position, this would be D1 flexion. If I'm doing this against resistance, I name this according to which movement goes against the resistance. So because as I bring this up, it goes against resistance, this would be resisted D1 flexion. Now when you do D1 flexion, you're getting shoulder flexion, of course, adduction and external rotation all at the shoulder as you go up. The elbow also flexes as you can see and the forearm should also supinate. The wrist is also going to flex and radi radially deviate and the fingers are also going to flex. Now when you're doing this holding anything whether it's a weight or a TheraBand you're not going to see the finger flexion because you have to be able to grasp whatever the object is. Okay, But the important things that you really want to see are those movements at the shoulder, elbow, forearm, and to some extent, the wrist. So this would be resisted D1 flexion. Now an important note here on trying to learn all of these specific joint movements for a given diagonal pattern. The temptation is to try and memorize each of these joint movements, all of this, for every single diagonal pattern. D1 flexion, D1 extension, and so on and so forth. But remember, we also have the lower extremity patterns that we'll cover in the next video, so there's a lot to memorize there. What you should do, the much better way to learn this, is to really understand the diagonal pattern movement. Be able to demonstrate it, understand what it looks like, get a mental image of it, because once you get a mental image of it, you should be able to reason through all of these movements without having to memorize them per se. Remember, work smarter, not harder.
Now obviously D1 extension then would be moving from the D1 flex position into the D1 extended position. So what I'm about to show you will be resisted D1 extension. I'm going to begin in a D1 flex position and move to a D1 extended position. And you'll notice all these movements over here are going to be exactly opposite that of D1 flexion. So the shoulder is going to obviously extend going down, also abduct and internally rotate. The elbow extends, of course, and the forearm pronates. We should also see the wrist extend and ulnar deviate, and then the fingers are also going to extend. Again, if you're holding a weight or a TheraBand, it might be difficult to see that finger extension because you do have to hold on to the object to some extent. But in terms of those movements for D1 extension, they are exactly equal and opposite to that of D1 flexion. Now we're going to talk about the D2 positions on the bottom of this figure. The one on the left is a position of D2 flexion, and the one on the right is a position of D2 extension. When you think of the D2 patterns, really think about drawing a sword. So the position of D2 extension right here is when you're about to take the sword out of its sheath. And the D2 flexion position is once you've drawn it from the sheath and you raise that sword into the sky. Now the reason this one is D2 flexion is again because the proximal joint here, the shoulder joint, is elevated. And when the shoulder joint is elevated, it is flexed. This one right here is D2 extension because that shoulder joint is now by the side. It's down, so it's more in the extended position. Going from a D2 extended position to a D2 flex position is D2 flexion. This one is going to be resisted D2 flexion. And you could think about this one of two ways. It's either going to be the up phase of the disco move, right? Or you could think about it as drawing a sword from a sheath and then pulling that sword into the sky. So there the sword is sheathed and then pull it out and stick it into the sky. So the movements of D2 flexion at each joint would be shoulder, flexion when you're bringing it up, abduction because it's moving away from midline, and external rotation. Now if you're being rigorous, the elbow should flex as it goes up. However, in most cases when people perform this, the elbow actually extends a little bit, but if you're being rigorous as you go up, the elbow really does need to flex. The forearm is going to supinate, the wrist is going to extend as it goes back and radially deviate, and then the fingers are going to extend. So that is resisted D2 flexion. Now D2 extension is the opposite. It's going from the up phase of the disco and then putting the arm back. Or you could think of it in terms of the sword, swords pointing into the sky, and then you put it back in its sheath by your side. This is going to be resisted D2 extension, and all the movements are exactly equal and opposite to D2 flexion. So the shoulder is going to extend, as you see there, going down. It's going to AD duct and internally rotate. The elbow is going to extend, although in a lot of cases you'll actually see it flex relatively, but if you're being rigorous, the elbow really does need to extend. The forearm is going to pronate. The wrist is going to flex and ulnar deviate, and then the fingers are going to flex as well. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.